Hi there, it's Bob here from Insidium. It's Top Tip Tuesday time again. And on today's video, we're going to be uh, creating a mixing paint simulation using three different emitters, all firing out different colored particles. And we're going to blend the color of those particles using the brilliant Nexus Blend modifier. So let's begin. In our scene, we have this simulation set up. We've got three emitters here and they're animating around a circle spline, which is giving us this circular mo uh, motion. And then you can dig into the scene file. We've got a Nexus fluids here in SBH mode, and that's giving us this nice fluid solve. Obviously, there's a gravity in the scene as well. So all of these particles have um, a, an emitter, one of three colors. And this looks like a nice fluid sim, but the problem we have is obvious, isn't it? Is that there's no blending of this color like a blending of paint the green particles are always green orange particles are always orange and it looks fine when they're part of their kind of particle fluid stream here but then when they mix obviously we're not getting this nice blending so what we need to do is blend the colors of this and we've got a nexus gpu modifier which can do that let's go to insidium x particles nexus and bring in a nexus blend now the Nexus blend enables you to blend lots of particle data, but we only want to blend the color and by default only the color is checked here. So that's perfect. Now if I hit play now, you're not actually going to see much different. There is some blending going on, but it's not very strong. So let's go to our strength and I'm going to whack this onto the full amount, which is a thousand percent. And now if I hit play, just from this point, if you look at these edge areas, if I hit play, look at that blend straight away. Now, what is happening here is each particle is searching within this distance of 10 centimeters of itself, a 10 centimeter radius. And if there are any other particles within that search distance, those colors are blended. Now, this is becoming a kind of a diffuse, muddied mess very quickly, isn't it? So what we can do is we can reduce this search distance. And by doing that, what we're going to do is um, keep some of the kind of the striping individual colors before it starts to blend itself out. So yeah, this is looking really nice, isn't it? As these colors make their way outwards. That's looking very cool indeed. Let's put that down even sh uh, at shorter search distance, two centimeters. Let's see what that gives us. And so we've got very strong blending but only on kind of the very edges where two colors meet and that gives us something like this i think i preferred that look on three centimeters so that that is the basics of how we can start blending this now it's not very useful actually in this instance um, adjusting our max blend at the moment this is set to just blend for the entire timeline look 300 frames but if i put this down to 60 frames the particles will only blend for 60 frames and then after 60 frames just maintain whatever color they are which looks okay but then as these particles that are getting older look they're not blending anymore and we're, we're missing that nice blended out uh, join uh, of these two kind of color areas and it's getting a bit grainy so for us that isn't actually very useful so let's put that back on to uh, the default 300 frames but we are what we are able to do uh, for a bit more control is to um, data map the strength values. So at the moment, we've got strength on full on a thousand percent and everything is just blending at that full strength all of the time. But we can map this. So this is what we're going to do. Where the particles are moving more quickly, so in these streams or when they first hit our container, we're going to give them the maximum blending strength of this 1,000. But then as they get to the outside, we're going to reduce that blend strength, which will help maintain some of our kind of ribboning strips. So here's how we do it. We'll go to the mapping tab. We're going to bring in a speed map. And the parameter we want to map to particle speed is not that distance value, but it's the strength value. And we're going to say when particles are going 20 centimeters per second and below, they will have a certain blending strength, which would be lower than the max. And then when they're traveling over 50 centimeters per second, they're going to get the maximum blending. So this min and max range of speed has been mapped to the x axis of our graph. So it's saying 
at 20 centimeters per second speed, they will have zero blend strength. The blend strength is mapped to the Y. And as they get faster, they get more blend strength and more blend strength until they reach 50 centimeters and above speed, they have full blend strength. Now that's cool, but at the moment, um, look, we've got zero blend strength for when they're not moving very quickly. And actually we always want them to be blending a bit so we don't get these kind of grainy coarse joins. So let's just raise this Y knot to maybe 0.1. So there's always some blending going on. And hit play. So now the faster moving particles are getting the full whack blend strength. Uh, and then as they get slower, they're still blending, but not as strongly, which maintains these really cool kind of colored ribbons of particles. So that's how we use the Nexus GPU color blending modifier to create this really nice, fairly simple to set up paint blending effect.